Weekly, and thank you once again for joining us. My name is Irving. Joining me as always is your co-host, Ali Mahan. Hi. Uh, welcome back, everybody, to Power On Weekly for the week of December 7th through December 13th, and uh, we have some splaining to do, Ali. Awesome splaining to do. Yeah. Sorry about uh, the delay, guys, and sorry about not having any episodes for the past month, pretty much. Uh, excuses, excuses, things happen. We were, got busy. Busy and a little lazy. Yeah, we were a little lazy. And a little preoccupied with our new dad. Yeah, we got look at the setup. Yeah. yeah. No, it was a lot of, you know, obviously holidays. And then um, I've been working on a business venture that's kept me busy. It's been some personal things going on. And then every weekend we thought we were going to end up doing the desk. And then something would come up and we couldn't go by the desk. We yeah. couldn't do this. We couldn't do that. So... We kind of just waited until we had a new desk. Yeah. And news was kind of slow, too, ish. Yeah. Like, ish. ish I mean, yeah. I guess the new console came out, but yeah, like, right, yeah. what, what news could there be about that? So. Yeah. <laughs> I was just peeking a little bit. Yeah. I mean, like she said, we had a lot of stuff. And yeah, we finally got this desk set up. Uh, I'll kind of want to brag about it a little bit, if you don't mind, uh, because yeah. I think we did a really good job. Uh, Allie found some inspiration on some site. Google. Wow. I know no one's ever heard of it. Yeah. Uh, but it was like a real, it was like a play by play of how this guy did it. And this is basically a T desk setup. And uh, he did get most of the stuff from Ikea, including like the Alex drawers. Mm -hmm. um, but he got like butcher, butcher block. From, Much nicer setup. Yeah, which we thought we were going to do originally. We went to Home Depot with my dad and I, I looked at the prices and I was like, oh my God, this is way more expensive than I thought. And then we went yeah. to Ikea. And we found these uh, line on, I think they are, uh, desks, and they're super customizable, really, really, and really, really cheap, too, compared to what we saw at Home Depot. And measured out to be the perfect yeah. length mm -hmm. for our space. Yeah. So, so it worked out really well. Um, and then if you follow me on Instagram and stuff, you saw my cable management. I took care of that. Um, I, I'm going to have to go down there and take care of it a little bit more. We need more tape. Oh, no. <laughs> Some stuff is already kind of falling apart, but that's okay. And then we're going to try to line these, uh, the desk on, on, on along the wall with some LED strips. Um, and then as well as some TV ones. We already found some lights that we really want. So uh, that will be the next uh, project that we do. Still a work in progress, but the most, the majority of it's set up. And mm -hmm. hopefully the background on these videos will look uber nice once we get a little extra lighting in here lighting, yeah. and yeah, acoustics was going to be the next thing that i want to do too maybe get some stuff up here because this is really bland and you guys don't see that right now because it's like cut off right here but i really want to put some stuff just a big there. white wall yeah pretty much um <laughs> but yeah but that's what we've been up to um and uh i hope you all have been staying well and been staying sane in lockdown and quarantine and stuff and i I'm glad that you guys are with us, and I'm glad we're doing this again. So let's jump into the news. We have months of news to cover, but we're not going to do that. We're only going to talk about this week because that's what Power On Weekly is. <laughs> but we we are going to talk about uh, the next gen consoles, the Series X specifically, and I want to give my personal first impressions on this. Now, behind me, back here, is the Chonk himself, Chonkalonk Monster. The Series X. We did, I did get my hands on one. Kind of want to tell the story of how it happened. So <laughs> yeah, go for it. <laughs> we we didn't pre-order anything, and like we were just like, ah, eh, we'll get it when if we if we have money or whatever, maybe and all that stuff. My friend Griff, uh, so shout out to Griff. He pre-ordered one the day of. He pre-ordered. He got up for work, and he was just like, man, I'll just pre-order this thing because he's a business salary man, and he just has money to blow that apparently. <laughs> yeah. So he did that, and uh. Closer to the release of launch, a week before, he messaged me and he was like, hey, like, I don't think I'm going to be playing with this as much as I thought I was. So if you want, you can buy it off of me and just take it off my hands. And I was like, bro, yeah, what the heck? So I talked to Alyssa and she was like, yeah, that's awesome because they were all sold out. We, were, we heard that shortages were going to be a major issue at launch, which they are. Um, and so I went over to his house the day of, went to go pick it up. Uh, we really didn't talk about cash or money, how much it was going to be, but I assumed $500. So I showed up with 500 bucks, took the cash from me. I took the box. He also threw in a, um, a, a controller as well. The, what was it? The, the elite two, 
he was just like you can just have it elite 2 the only thing is the the there's a little bit of drifting on it but i mean this controller the new one is amazing so i don't really care um but yeah i mean we also got that too so really we saved money because we didn't have we didn't have to do shipping or taxes and we got a elite controller as well out of it so i mean it was kind of a deal <laughs> yeah um so i've been playing with it for a month now um ally hasn't really touched it at all uh she's seen me kind of dabble with it i show her a few things here and there uh but not she hasn't really felt uh the experience of playing a next gen console or this next gen console specifically um and really, I mean, you only play Overwatch, and I showed you Overwatch, and it pretty much runs the same. So it's not that you big didn't of... you didn't show me Overwatch. You showed Justin Overwatch, and I wasn't down here. Oh yeah, you're right. Oh, so... <laughs> I wonder if I have it in there. I don't <laughs> think I do. Um, but it doesn't even it doesn't run any different. Like frames might be like smoother, but like it's not that big of a difference. Now I will show off. Well, we're gonna show off some stuff because I want to show her like live footage of this, basically, um, of games that do take advantage of this and uh. There are pros and cons to this console. And at the end, we're going to decide whether it's worth your money if you can get your hands on one right now. Um, either $500 for the normal retail value or 1000 if you're going to go spend it on scalpers. So, um, Which, don't do that. That's terrible. <laughs> Ali's like, no. <laughs> um, first thing I want to show off is the quick resume feature. And uh, so I have these games already pretty much loaded in. In the top right corner, it says quick resume. Um, and that's how you know that these games take advantage of it. Uh, Ma Master Chief uh, Collection runs really well on this. I was playing with it a little bit earlier. Really steady frame. I'm in the middle of a mission. Just like that. Now, from, from here, it looks really smooth. Like, um, I think this game also does run 60 frames, which is awesome. I didn't know I had a rocket launcher. But yeah, um, so that's one, right? Go back mm -hmm. home. And boot up for the horizon. Another quick resume game. It basically just loads into like the game. You don't have to go through the title screen. You don't have to go through push start to start the game. You're just in your Supra and yeah, on this anime Chica. You heard it first. Yeah, that's Chica <laughs> from the from what's it called? I don't know what anime it is. So you have that, and yeah, I mean like being able to just like. Like this, you're not going to do this like all the time. You're not going to be like, oh, I'm going to switch to this game and I'm going to switch to that game. It's, yeah. it's, it's like, it's very, it's kind of gimmicky, but at the same time, it just shows the, the, sh the speed of this console. Yeah, for sure. Um, speaking of the speed, the biggest thing that I've noticed is Monster Hunter. So Monster Hunter on console uh, is notoriously slow, uh, especially when it comes to just like loading in missions. Stuff. you're just going to load up a random mission and usually this screen coming up right now it'll you you can you have time to go to the shop and you have time to go to get like you know uh your food and everything but it's already ready to go and bam why is it such a slow game what no i mean like before oh i don't know uh the loading bar down here is loading into the mission and i'm already in on the Xbox One, the, this brick here, I would still be waiting for that thing to load. Yeah. But now I'm like literally in the middle of a mission. And again, going back to the quick resume, just being able to go into another game right away and like it just holds that place. I think it's super impressive. Um, not all games have this. Yeah. Um, Destiny, Overwatch, anything that requires you to be online. Does not. It doesn't have it. Single player games, though. No uh, single problem. Single player games. Uh, most games, I mean, like, even multiplayer games like Halo, like, if you're playing. Yeah, but they don't require the internet connectivity to. Mm -hmm. I get what you're saying. Yeah. But, yeah, being able to just jump between, you know, Cyberpunk and everything like that is really. Um, so, with that being said, there are games that are optimized for the Series X. Games like Forza Horizon 4, Gears 5, Rainbow Six Siege, Halo Master Chief Collection, Star Wars Squadrons, and Destiny 2. These games take full advantage of the next gen console and they're very, very obvious as to visuals like frame rates and all that fun stuff. The one that I noticed the most, and I know you're going to hate, is, is Destiny 2. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I was playing Destiny 2 Beyond Light before the optimization came out on yeah. the Series X. So I've been playing it for about like three weeks and it has like an HDR mode and it looks great. 
and I was playing it and it was, it was fun. And I was like, yeah, this is cool. Like whatever. But during that time, I wasn't really impressed with the series X yet because it was really the only game I was playing. There's not a lot of games at launch that came out that I was like, I have to play that. Ironically, that DLC came out at launch. So that mm-hmm. was technically a launch game. Yeah. But it wasn't optimized for series X yet up until last week. And oh my gosh, it, it's a huge difference. It's 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 the frame rate is so smooth. The game is extremely smooth. These are 4K TVs that run at 60 hertz. If I were to hook it up to my 144 hertz monitor, I can also then get 120 hertz in, in Crucible, which is uh, 120 frames per second, which just makes it even more smoother. And for anybody who plays first person shooters or just in general like that, the higher frames the better. And it's it's a world of a difference. It's so huge, especially for competitive. I know that a lot of people who play on PC and have a next gen console are going to switch over to next gen or to switch over to here because um because the on PC you have cheaters on Destiny. On here, there's no way of getting cheaters. So yeah. that's a huge it's a huge buff for it. Um games that don't have optimized for Series X are they still play really well. But as we saw with Cyberpunk, and as we're going to talk about in the next section, there, are, you, it, 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 there's, it only makes a difference so much. Yeah, for sure. Right. Um, ironically, the only really big difference one that I've noticed is Monster Hunter, because Monster Hunter isn't optimized for Series X, but it's still stupid fast. I mean, we just saw it right there. Yeah. Um, so there's yes and no. Frame rates is going to be solid, and it's going to look a lot clearer for sure. But, um. But speed is really the biggest thing for it. Um, Quick resume is really cool as well and all that stuff. And the, one of the biggest things that I like is actually the controller. Um, it's hefty. It's got some grip to the back of it, which is really nice. Uh, these feel a little more tactile. The triggers are really, they're, they're gripped as well. Um, and the D-pad is so amazing. I love this D-pad so much. Very clicky. It's, it's so, so nice. The only thing I don't like is this share button. It's it's nice to be able to just take a screenshot like I was taking screenshots yesterday when I was playing Cyberpunk instead of having to go in here and, and go to you know, capture options and all this other stuff. You can just hit the button. But I don't know how many times I accidentally hit this button and it just takes a screenshot and I'm like in the middle of a game and I'm like, oh man, like this, it's like it's a small thing. But that's that that is something that I, I'm not really that big of a fan of. Yeah. Do you just wish it was in a different location? Hmm. Maybe, maybe like down here, like down closer to the bottom or I don't know, because I mean, obviously the most, you know, ideal location is right here. Well, normal location would be there, but Mm. I don't know. I feel like they could have done something easier with, but then, yeah, it just goes back to limiting buttons. Yeah. It's the only option that they had. Um, Does... Seeing seeing the the Xbox and leading everything up to it, I know you haven't been gaming a lot either either way, and you don't play a lot of Xbox or like a lot of variety of games. But what are your what are your thoughts on Series X? Was it a waste of money on our end, or do you do you think that it has its benefits? Well, because it wasn't a waste because I got an Xbox upstairs now. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason why she says that is because we we have a switch we had a wii up there right we had a wii u and we use that for for youtube for netflix for hulu everything and then it just stopped playing youtube or netflix or one of the apps it just like it would not work so we put in our 360 upstairs right and we started using that and it was fine. And the same thing, same issue happened. Eventually, yeah. The, yeah, something, one of the like three three things that we watch just stopped working. Like YouTube never played or like Twitch never played. No, it was YouTube, which I use a lot of. Mm-hmm. And it kept like freezing and I kept having to restart the app like once an hour. Yeah. So it was really annoying. And then we got the Switch, which has YouTube, has Hulu, but it doesn't have Netflix. And is not my favorite console in general yeah i feel like us using that as a media center is gonna kill that thing so fast like i have no faith in that console lasting so i didn't want to keep putting miles into it yeah miles into it because i don't have faith in it in general Uh uh-huh i i have no faith in nintendo yeah so sorry fanboys (laughs) but so since we got this we we put our xbox one my my old xbox one upstairs and uh as our media center yeah oh ow (laughs) 
which is funny because that's the original intent of the Xbox One when it first came out as a media center. And it's a great media center. Yeah. <laughs> but um, all jokes aside, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it was something we were going to buy eventually. Mm-hmm. So I'm really like... I'm not like super impressed, but not in like a bad way. It's not like, oh, this is a waste of money or, oh, this is like, it's a great console. It's just the Xbox One, even being the first generation of console has been so good for us. And like, Mm -hmm. yeah, I see the difference. I do. It's a good quality difference. It's all that. I mean, there's a reason that I'm, yes, there's console shortages, but even if there weren't console shortages right now, I wouldn't be buying one. I would be sticking to my, my Xbox One. It's. It just seems like the anyone picking to upgrade or to buy this console, it's just very situational. Yeah. It made sense for us to buy this. We had first generation. You literally had a launch console. That yeah. upstairs is literally a launch console. It was a Titanfall launch console. Yeah. So, I mean, that thing's old. Yeah. But the thing is, it's still... that. It, I guess the issue I have is the thing still runs freaking great. Mm-hmm. It still runs amazing. My console still runs amazing. Yeah. Like you get your graphical updates and stuff here. The only reason I will be willing to upgrade in the future is because, again, we have somewhere else to, to use this console. Yeah. It's not like this console is going to go to waste. Mm-hmm. So it's just, do I think people need these consoles right now? If you're, no. Yeah. No one needs this right now. Really, we didn't need a new generation. But... I think if you are an avid gamer, like why I was okay with you buying it is you're literally down here all the time. <laughs> like you literally like that's what you do. You come home, you play games like you're on the, you're on your console hours every single day. Mm-hmm. So I knew it wasn't a waste of money. It wasn't just some pretty little gadget you were going to buy that was never going to get touched. Mm-hmm. For me, it doesn't make sense to do that upgrade right now. Yeah. I don't play enough lately. Like I, I do play a little bit, but not not to the extreme to justify spending another five hundred dollars today on something yeah my console runs great if my console was going to shit for any reason yes i would upgrade in a heartbeat Mm -hmm. because i do use it enough but i don't know it just seems like it's very very situational this generation does feel different though in the sense that I think we even kind of mentioned this with our phones today where we're like, our phones are about to be paid off. Our phones are almost two years old yeah. and they still feel like amazing. Like these are the, this particular phone we have is like the nicest phone we've ever had. And, and mm. it's the only phone that has, you haven't felt like two years later and it feels like, oh, there's some other tech that makes it better. Or, oh, the screen seems like it's kind of going yeah. or, or the, or the battery life or the battery is life is, yeah, it's yeah. horrible. Like this phone has held up so good. Yeah. And I feel like we're just at that point in tech. I don't think I think we're at a point where we're going to hit a stopping point of major advances that make big differences for a few years. Yeah. I think this is going to be a good five, ten years before things begin to feel like they did over the past, what, 20 years, mm-hmm. 2000 to 2020. It just felt like there was so much advancement that, yes, every three to five years, a console generation made sense. OK, upgrade because these are huge changes. Yeah. I think I think that's also why Xbox is not so pushing for people to upgrade. I think they also kind of realize that. Like, yes, these are great. Mm-hmm. But like I think they also are kind of in that same understanding of we're trying to advance the technology, but it's kind of hit this plateau and it's going to be instead of a huge spike, I think, you know, instead of being whoop, everything's going to kind of just be like a little gradual. gradual for a yeah. while. Yeah. So, I don't know. I don't I don't think most people are going to need this upgrade. Yeah. I obviously didn't haven't played with it. It's it just feels like the the upgrades are not a necessity today. Mm-hmm. They are a definite luxury. They, yes, yes. And that, it's yeah, and it's a it's a want. That, it, that's definitely the the feeling that I get from it. It's not like it's like you said it's not like it's night and day difference or stuff like uh, the it's speed. not the it's not the 360 to the Xbox yeah, One. Yeah, the speed is very impressive. Um, and when I go upstairs and I boot up, you know, Tetris Effect. <laughs> or, oh yeah. <laughs> or Destiny, I feel like a small difference in speed. I'm not loading into planets as fast. You know, the when I bring up my my character menu or loadouts, like it's not as quick. But it's not a game breaker. I could still play. The fact that I can, I'm still fine with playing that. You know, Destiny on this. 
and be okay and not be like, I need to play it on my Series X. Well, I don't know, maybe now because of 60 frames. But anyways, um, but like, it, I think that that that's that speaks volume, right? And for people who are either casual, like console players or players who don't really care about like pretty graphics and everything and just want to just casually game and stuff like that, I don't feel like it's a necessity, um, which like we've talked about, I think oh, Microsoft doesn't care. I mean, we there's been reports of like a, 60% of use of people who bought uh series S's were brand new game pass uh subscribers which we've always talked about that's always been their sale that was and that was their goal with that yeah i think with the series x it's definitely a really nice upgrade if you're going from this from the original xbox 1 to a series x i think it's really nice from an s it's from an from an xbox 1 s the white one or, or the sad edition if you have it to that it's also a nice upgrade as well if you have the xbox one x and you upgrade to the series x it's not as big of a difference um i guess the best way to, to kind of say it is like for for us is like uh for for sony right or or let's just say canon because canon was a big thing canon my uh the mark ii right the mark ii the canon 5d mark ii which is the that camera right or not that camera the one before this one when you went from the Mark II to the Mark III, which is that one, it was a night, night and day. day difference. We all said it. It was night and day. It was so fast, super nice, all that fun stuff. But when you go from the Mark III to the Mark IV, very small updates that just to pay for another body for another $3,500 for another body was not justifiable. And the same thing could be said for the Xbox One X with the Series X. Um, overall, I do like it. I wish that more games were out i wish my more games were exclusive to it halo not being at launch is a huge deal it's 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 ingrained in like almost every console launch where it's like the 360 at halo 3 and we we've had gone seven years i think or five years without a halo game and it's very obvious now kudos to the team for at least showing off some of the stuff that they've been working on it looks very impressive i think a lot of people got a lot of respect back from it especially from what they've they literally laid it all out on the table and Halo is coming back in 2021. Uh, so next year in the fall, which is awesome, but it does feel like the Halo void is in this console line, which it kind of sucks. Um, but the, my main issue is just, there's not a lot of games to justify this. There's no, no game on the, on the Xbox that is uh, a, an exclusive. There's no uh, Demon Souls. There's no Miles Morales, you know, Miles Morales. Um, so it's it doesn't really make sense for you to justify to get that and i think i think while they probably had a, a better roadmap into this i think COVID is totally derailing everything for them yeah and so i can't even say oh a year from now let's check back yeah i feel like that was what happened with the xbox one is it was like okay launch wasn't great but a year after things were looking amazing and great i don't think it's going to be the same story here i'm thinking two years from now is when this will really start to shine again yeah and be worth it Otherwise, it just seems like if you need an upgrade because your console's not doing so hot or you mm -hmm. want it as a luxury, then upgrade. It just doesn't seem like it's necessary, though, this yeah. early in. No, for sure. Uh, one last tiny thing that I wanted to mention is there's a few issues with it. Um, a few people saying, like, it's completely bricked on them. It's very rare, but, like, just completely bricks. That sucks. I'm so sorry for anybody that has happened that that's happened to you. Um, I think... My issue that I've had with this is, is I think my TV, but, and when I go from a game that uses HDR, it auto switches to the HDR game and everything like that. So it uses the HDR in the TV, but when then I, then I go back to like the, the title screen, it kind of glitches out and then everything's mm. like all green and really ugly, hmm. but it's a really easy fix. I just switch between the two HDMIs and it's, it's fixed. It's, I think it's just a, a, a thing in the TV that's having that issue. And yeah. the other issue that uh, Teresa had the, when she tweeted about it, not being able to log in, she hasn't been able to fix it until like last week. So she's Yikes. had her Series X for a month. And the, 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 the uh, sorry. The issue was her internet speed. They took her Xbox and they took it over to Adrian's house and it worked fine. And then hmm. Adrian took his Xbox and brought it to Teresa's house, and the same issue was happening. She needed an upgrade to the Giga Blast. Oh, what the well, how did yeah. Okay. I don't know how that kind of makes a difference, but apparently it did. Wow. But um, yeah, so check your internet, make sure that it's like fast, apparently. Fast enough. Yeah. 
if you uh, upgrade that's weird it is really weird um but those are just some small things that that i've noticed but yeah i mean like i said i don't think it's you don't need to run out and grab one if your console works right now if you're already in the ecosystem and you're you have an xbox one you have an s or you have a siri or, or an xbox one x you're fine you'll be like seriously you're not missing out trust me <laughs> i feel like the people who need an xbox one are the new xbox series series x that one the chonk chonk yeah you you are the people who are just going to get them right away. It's the people who want the latest and greatest yeah. or are new to the new to the Xbox ecosystem. Yeah. I think most of us are are okay to kind of chill though. Yeah. But uh let me know what you guys uh think. Do you have a Series X? What are your uh thoughts on it? Are you enjoying it? Do you have some issues with it? Let us know in the comments below. Cyberpunk 2077 and finally released out. They did it, boys. <laughs> it's out. It's out. It's right there. It is right there. The real game. It is the real game. It came out, Allie, and uh man, there's a lot to kind of uncover on unbox here. We're gonna talk about the week leading up to uh, Cyberpunk. We're gonna talk about what happened at launch, and then I'm gonna give you some of my impressions. Because uh obviously this is a game that if I've personally been waiting for for a very long time. Um, so leading up to it has been very exciting. And even though they've there's been a lot of delays, it has finally been out. And we're also going to discuss, should, ha should it have been delayed even more? Let's talk about pre-launch. Embargoes lifted for reviewers on the 7th, which is last Monday, basically. Uh, early reviews are pretty good, um, although every... Um, Every reviewer wasn't allowed to use their own video that they captured, which is kind of uh, kind of a red flag, I think. Absolutely. Uh, they were only allowed to show gameplay from uh, like trailers and everything like that. But reviewers did not hold back and say that the game was buggy, even it, with their PCs being super super strong. The game was pretty buggy to the point where it took you out of the immersion a little bit. Characters were in a serious moment doing some really funky stuff and uh just overall it wasn't as polished as it was now they were playing on a on a day zero patch i think which was just like the base game and there was a day one patch that did get released but uh their impressions were not that great uh well kind of mixed uh also there were only pc reviews given out there were no console reviews uh codes giving out it we'll get to as to why that is uh, during the time Metacritic, uh, the game was at a 20 or 91 on Metacritic throughout the week. Uh, IGN gave it a nine. Uh, they, they said it was great and it was really good, but there was a lot of bugs and technical issues and GameSpot gave it one of the lowest score, which was a seven. Um, and all you white knights of, you know, cyberpunk, you go, go watch that review because I think it's really, it's really fair. Like go, like, it's just a fair review. Like it is what it is. And yeah, they, they go over like, you know. The good and the bad and i i genuinely really liked it um so that was all pre-launch now launch day uh i showed you those videos of uh, all all the versions of the uh, the the consoles the console versions that were being shown and everything like that and uh they were not pretty ali oh no no <laughs> no yeah so <laughs> we watched a video oh, i totally i i can't remember what it was i wish i didn't dang it but we watched a video where those two guys uh, from the UK were talking and they were comparing literally like just people, them standing in the street and seeing the game run. And then also them in the middle of combat and from, they didn't even test this bad boy <laughs> or not bad boy. Yeah. They didn't test this at all. They tested the S. Yeah. Uh, the S, the X and, and everything else like that. And it was horrendous. The frames were so bad on uh, the S like barely hitting 30 frames a second, mostly dipping in 15. Uh, surprisingly, it worked better on PlayStation 4, but it still didn't fare as well. And even on Series X and uh, PlayStation 5, it still looked kind of muddy and not clear, which was something that I also noticed um, when I was playing it, and I was genuinely disappointed, even playing on this. Yeah. I, I was genuinely... So I can't even imagine like playing on this console here. 
And I, my heart goes Let's out. Let's load it up. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. My heart goes out to everybody, especially Justin. Justin, uh, I'm so sorry, Justin. He was he was heartbroken by seeing it. Apparently, it's it's gotten a little bit better, and he's it's more stable. But uh, he and his dad like to play video games together, and he was really looking forward to playing this with his dad. But and it it wasn't really that great. Uh, what were your thoughts when you were watching the, those videos? E. Yeah. The, the, the issue I have with it is this game was meant to originally release on these consoles. This generation, it was not developed or intended to be a next-gen game. Mm-hmm. So I'm just really confused more than anything as to what went so terribly wrong. Like, if you're developing for... The current generation, how is it so bad on the current generation? I just, did they start implementing too many things that were supposed to beef it up in the end? Or I don't understand why you wouldn't build for the, build for your worst generation and then implement upgrades into other versions for other consoles. Like it's just, I think that's more my concern is I'm, I'm confused. Yeah. If it was built as a next gen game and then they were like, we're going to try to also port it and make it available on the other generations, then I'd be like, okay, I can see why there's a lot of issues. It was not meant for this generation. Mm-hmm. It really just seems like <sighs> they, this needed to be a next gen game and that's it. Either that or they bit off more than they can chew. I don't know. Yeah. I think, I'm I think confused. it's, I think it's that. So like this game was originally supposed to come out in April. I mean, they've had plenty more time to put in more stuff and everything like that. It's it's like the devil's in the detail is the biggest thing that I can kind of refer to where it's like you can have like when you're when, as an artist, you can be drawing or you can be photoshopping or you can, whatever you're doing. And you can like get to a point where you're like, yeah, that looks cool. And then you just keep going and you keep going and you keep going and you keep going. And then you ruin all your good work. Yeah. And then and that and then also just in general, like the, you put so much more stuff into it that it was like it was fine in the beginning. But now it's like so overdone or like. It'll never be complete. It's, you know, it just has to just be done. And maybe this game, they bit off more than they can chew, especially coming around with, you know, next gen consoles being launched this year. Maybe they thought, all right, well, let's push it back and we'll do next gen as well. And we'll, uh, you know, they have to build nine versions of this game now. So that's why they had to push it back and kind of align a little bit with it. Maybe some, some hand, you know, Microsoft had their hand in it saying it's a you know smart delivery as well with for series x and now they have this like this the expectation that this also has to run on series x and it's and maybe just adding so much more stuff to it in order for it to be big and ambitious is also a reason why it's not running so well because if we look a game uh, at a game uh like gta 5 on this on even on the xbox one it runs great it runs really well like that game is also big ambitious and like open world with a bunch of npcs and things to do and all that fun stuff and not it may not be so highly dense and populated as cyberpunk but that game runs really really well and i just can't i i don't know how this game was made and it's not it 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 doesn't do as good of a job as like gta 5 as well I'm I'm also very confused as well. And I think it's more of that than anything is the confusion. Mm-hmm. Like, what what, what were we going to get in April then? Yeah, <laughs> like, right? if it doesn't run well and like, I'm not a game developer. So I, what I'm saying could be completely wrong, but it just seems to me like all of this kind of stuff is early development stuff you start figuring out your engines and your how much something can handle on a console like Mm -hmm. this isn't oh the last six months we're 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 gonna fit like you this is stuff you i would assume you figure out pretty early in and you figure out where your limit is yeah and there is a limit yeah and there needed to be a limit clearly and Mm -hmm. they clearly push past the limit that these consoles could handle yes i'm just confused like why would you 
still know know that these need to be released on on older generation consoles and just continue to push past that limit like yeah i mean because i it, don't understand yeah i'm also look i'm also not a game developer either so i can't <laughs> be like oh it runs gta runs amazing and this game doesn't so i don't know there's obviously a lot of internal things as well but like i also go back to like games like the last of us 2 that came out on playstation 4 and like miles morale i mean spider-man came out on playstation 4 those games are beautiful. They are they're the visuals on that game are so great, right? For that generation of consoles for PlayStation 4. And it's just kind of weird that even Cyberpunk, a game as ambitious as this is, with a bunch of time and a bunch of money and a bunch of development on it, from a studio that's world renowned, you know, puts out this. It's you know, it's kind of it's odd. The game itself, I am enjoying but i think more than anything it's the way they kind of went around it that's kind of bothering me because the biggest thing that i that really kind of rubbed me the wrong way was the lack of them being very specific as to how reviewers were playing the game because they knew there were issues exactly and we talked about it yeah we talked about it on the last episode that that uh they the one of the biggest things that they wanted to get is a good metacritic review and they've got a 91 right now but had these had these reviewers got their hands on the console editions, that would be totally. This different is not a story. yeah. This is an accurate score, maybe to a PC game. Mm-hmm. This is not an accurate score to every player's experience, though, and that is a problem. Yes, that is an issue. And the other thing is, it's like you know, this game will get fixed. Yeah, it will get better. But at what point? The uh, the impression I get is the scores you're seeing are of a game that it's going to be. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. Especially when it comes to console players. Like, mm-hmm. you're looking at a score of its potential, and you're yeah. looking at a score of what it may be. It's gonna, you're looking at the score of a game a year from now. Yeah. You're not looking at today's game. Yeah. Because of those restrictions of not letting people play on various consoles and various things. You're not getting an honest review. You're getting, you're getting a review of their best, mm-hmm. which, okay, that's great at their best. But what what is that saying where it's always like you're only as good as your your like worst? Your, yeah, uh-huh. you know, and it's like, yeah, this is not this yeah, is but- not what the, all it, all all of the things deserve. Does Metacritic is it only the game itself? It's not by like by like where you're playing it, right? It's no, just yeah, the it's, game it's in general. Kind of an overall, is over- there a, is there um any sort of review some, system? Some some uh reviewers do do versions, the PC By, version, Xbox okay. or console version and stuff like that, but because of uh because of how they handled it and they were like, you know, you can only play place or PC version. Um they kind of and every this is the hottest game of the year. Reviewers kind of had to push that out anyways. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. Know? So like it's it, it needs yeah. Oh no, I get it. I think I think uh, you're right though because it's like you're getting only one great a good ver- great version of the game out of nine that they said right. Hi Kumo, <laughs> did, did y'all hear that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, but it, I think the and right now the user review is at a six point eight, which is a uh, which is clearly a more accurate representation of of where things actually are. Yeah, because like. Critics are, and reviewers, they're journalists specifically, they're, it's their job. It's their, you know, profession and it's, it's a very professional and unbiased opinion. Um, gamers are very biased, obviously. So that's, you know, the, 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 the majority of the people who are very like vocal about their dissatisfaction with it. That's why it's so low. But at the same time, it doesn't devalue their opinion. Um, I, I was in a forums and I saw somebody say like, oh, it's that low because pe- that's why those people aren't critics. They're, they're just their user reviews. And it's like, it doesn't devalue their opinion. No. It's still their game. They still their a, money. That's a terrible argument because yeah. at the end of the day. So you're not allowed well, to have your own. Well, and at the end of the day, the gamer's opinion is what matters because the gamer is the ones paying for these games yeah. and uh, supporting a company. So how are you going to sit there and say, Oh, this is why they aren't reviewers. Their opinion is a hundred percent valid. Yeah. Whether people, some people get a little ridiculous on things and go a little overboard, but their opinion is valid. A gamer, a game, a gamer's opinion should always be valued more than a reviewer's. And I'm sorry because they're the ones paying. Yeah. These companies' bills. They're the they are the end target for this. So that's a really yeah I thought it was shitty really... thing to say because it's completely inaccurate. Yeah. It's actually the opposite. <laughs> but um. But yeah, that's 
that's the whole fiasco of Cyberpunk 2077 as far as pre-launch and current launch. Um, I, with my personal experience with it, I've been enjoying it. I have been really taking my time with it. I haven't even hit the 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 title card, which isn't because like it's so massive that like I haven't hit it. I've been 20 hours in. I've only played like I want to say like four, five or five or six hours. But I'm doing a couple side missions. I'm like doing like, you know, just kind of exploring, walking around, kind of getting my grasp on it. Because in a way, the game does tell you some things to do, but it's also not really good at explaining a lot of things. Um, a lot of things in general is the the skill tree. I'm very overwhelmed right now because the points that you put into it are very not limited, but they're they're really important on where you put them. Yeah. And I don't know if the build that I'm thinking in my head is even going to be, I'm going to be able to do it. And with everything with, with that being said as well, like the game is also limiting me on being able to do that build as well, because I don't have a lot of like resources in order to do that. What I'm trying to get at is like, I'm trying to be like a hacker basically, but you start off the game with only two hacks that you're able to be able to do uh, as well as some other stuff like, you know, turning on cameras, turning them off, distracting enemies and stuff. But I feel very limited as to how I want to be able to play right away from the get go. So I'm kind of forced to just use guns, which I'm like, I, I don't mind using guns. It's fine. But like, I wanted to be a not hacker. what you wanted. Yeah. yeah, I wanted to be a hacker or like use a katana and everything. And I'm like, well, I don't know if I can be a hacker or use a katana. And then, you know, I don't know. So it's 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 really I'm OK. <laughs> See, I'm overwhelmed. I'm I'm enjoying it. I I'm I'm curious to see how open it gets more because right now I'm, it's again very limited. I haven't hit the titles card yet, and I'm excited and I'm looking forward to playing it. But at the same time, I also haven't had the same itch I've had with other games, where I'm like I have to go downstairs and play it. I have to go down there. Like I have to go. I've actually been really surprised. Yeah. Um. Like I mean, the other night when I first played it, I played like a two or three hours, and then I switched over to Call of Duty, and you're like, what the heck? <laughs> last yeah. time I did the same thing too i know you did i heard you um and main, <laughs> the main thing is too is like you do have to have a lot of time investment into it because i know like once i get into a mission i'm gonna start doing it and there's a lot of things to do i might find some other side missions and stuff i have to heavily invest time into it for sure which i don't mind at all yeah but i also it also surprising surprises me that i'm not like clamoring to keep going and staying up at four o'clock in the morning playing. so i think that kind of says a lot as to how this game is um, part of it is because of the just the visuals don't look that great. The glitchiness of it is kind of buggy. Um, but then the other part is I'm a little overwhelmed as to like what I need to be doing and how I need to be progressing with my my skill tree and everything like that. And um, the the world is beautiful. It's really nice. There's dildos everywhere, <laughs> and it's uh it's very uh like there's just the ads for it are like just in your effing face. Just like sex everywhere. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, that's that's the game and that's the world and everything. But I think it's also kind of like unrealistic. Like the same ads are like everywhere. Yeah. And I'm like, there's no way in reality this would be a thing. But I mean, this is a work of fiction. But um, the only other thing that I also want to, I hope that I get to explore more is conversations. Um, a game like Mass Effect is the reason why I love that game so much is because when you talk to people, not only do you build relationships with them and they trust you and all that other stuff, but you also learn more about them. You do all these things. And then it actually has real world or like world implications as to like what can happen in the future. If you don't have a strong bond with a character, you may not be able to save them in the end and all that stuff. I hope that that's the same case for here. But from what I've heard, it's very shallow, which is kind of, it's really disappointing because as an RPG, that's what, that's what you, you were, do. That's what you were hoping for. That's what yeah. and that's what it sounded like they were aiming for. Yeah. Which it, it it sucks because I've already found characters where I'm like, oh, that that character's cool. Like I, I hope I get to talk to them and like learn more about them. Like, you know, the friendship or whatever it may be. Um and I, I just hope that that carries on. But I also don't want to get my hopes up because apparently that's not really where it goes. But that's that's kind of where I'm at right now with it. Um but yeah, does does this game interest you, Alyssa? <laughs> I'm not a big RPG fan. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I feel like I feel like I would pick it up and give it a shot. Like but not right now. 
Yeah. I'm definitely going to wait for them to patch some stuff out to make it play better, make it look better. Like, I wasn't one of the like, I have to play Cyberpunk at release. So yeah. if I ever do play it, I could wait. I'd yeah. rather wait and get the experience that was intended than what they have out right now. So I feel the same way, which is why I, you know, last episode and even this episode here, I'm, I'm saying that this should have been pushed back again because, oh, yeah. because um, I would have rather, because the, the next gen, the optimized for series X version is coming next year um, for this game. And they're still working on it and it'll come out next year and that's fine. But um, I don't know. I kind of wish I, that, that would have been the version that I played initially and not, I'm basically playing the Xbox one version but mm -hmm. on a powerful system. Yep. Which is, I mean, when the Xbox One version is literally the worst version out of all of them, it, it kind of says a lot, right? It can only do so much. I know, Como. <laughs> <laughs> he agrees. He agrees, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, that's where we're at with Cyberpunk. Um, only time will tell what happens. Now, uh, something that, I, that just came up right now, like on my phone, when, uh, right before we started recording as well, is that there are people that are getting refunds for it as well from Sony uh, that people either complained about it too much and they actually want refunds. They're, they're giving them out. So um, I don't know if Xbox will do the same or how that'll, that'll work, but uh, Cyberpunk has been one of the most successful games launches ever. And I think it sold 8 million copies. Don't quote me. And I'll double check. But it's it's been very, very highly well received like financially. So we'll see. There was a dip in their stocks. 29% down um, after the launch when everybody started seeing all the consoles issues. Yeah, but the stock market isn't reality. Yeah. <laughs> it's just pushing numbers <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> the stock um, market's weird. It is weird. Yeah. <laughs> and even then, like their stocks are like, I think it was like 35 bucks a share, and now it's down to like seven or something. So Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's that that's the mess of Cyberpunk. I hope it gets better. And uh um, but yeah. Um, I want to know what you guys think. How has your experience with Cyberpunk been so far? Have you been enjoying it? Uh, have you been having issues with it? What is your current build that you have right now? What are you trying to go for? Let me know in the comments below. All right, and that's it for this episode of Power On Weekly. Um, thank you guys, everybody, for joining us. Saying goodbye as well is our kitty cat Sora and Kumo. Yeah. Uh, I hope they're all up in here yeah. all of a sudden. <laughs> We're just like, ah, let's just bring them in for the outro. <laughs> um, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I want to really thank you all for coming back and joining us again. I know we've been gone for quite some time, but we always appreciate you guys joining us. Yeah. And um, I mean, the reality with <laughs> Sora. <laughs> the reality with Sora. The reality with Sora. Um, the reality is, you know, with a holiday and everything coming up, there might be one more episode this year. We're not really sure. Yeah. Um, but if not, we'll be back at it next year. Yeah, we'll see you in the new year. But I, I we really... might be taking a break though for the rest of the year. Potentially. Yeah. I do. I do want to try to get one out next week because I want to give you our version of game of the year. Since we didn't play a lot of games, we still did play some games that didn't even come out this year. So I kind of want to do our version of like game of our year that we. <laughs> Well done, Sora. We're almost done with the outro. You're like, no. Uh, but yeah, maybe we'll see you next week. Maybe not. But as for right now, thank you guys for joining us. We appreciate it. Yeah. Take care. See you later. Bye. Bye.